it's another week of good reviews. We say goodbye to a potential classic, and we said hello to an, to an entirely new one, which I'm sure if you're an adult, you're going to enjoy. So, welcome to another episode of Reviews Digest, mga ka lifestyle. All right, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 8. Looks like I said in the, in the last episode review for this anime, the plot thickens, all right? <clears throat> this kid challenged Rook to a rush duel. Uh, mala Mad Max pa ang get up niya, no? <laughs> All right, anyway, challenged him to a rush duel, which he eventually lost, right? But he was ahead during the first, um, during the first several turns, uh, from the sec, from the third turn onwards, up to the last, he was totally in control. He was in control of the duel. Then all of a sudden, Rook pulls out a fast one, beats him, and he beats him with his new ace, Dragonic Slayer. Right? I'm so excited about these new monsters. I hope, I hope they don't remain Rust Duel Prince for long. All right. Because I really want to, I really want to use them in my other decks. Okay? I hope these uh, these cards be featured or being released as Rush Duel Prince won't remain Rush Duel Prince for long. So they found out, the gang found out that um, his mother doesn't approve of Rush Duels. Who his mother is? Mimi. <laughs> Pero um. But uh, the whole team sevens don't know it. Don't know it yet. But we know it now. Okay? We know it now. He comes home, and of course, it's confirmed. Mimi is his mom. Okay, the uh, the spy from episode seven. The, the thirty-seven year old girl who looks like a who looks like a who looks like a real kid. That's his mother. <laughs> who knows how to cook spaghetti? Okay, Neapolitan spaghetti to be exact. So, if, so at first, Mimi forbade him to 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 play the rush duel. If he if he still continues to play rush duel, she won't make Neapolitan spaghetti for him anymore. Yun ang parusa niya. That's that's her punishment to her son. But she continued, and she actually saw that duel between. Uh, Yoshio, the uh, the kid, and Rook. She actually saw that duel. At nakita niya, and well, she saw the um, the delighted look on her son's face. So man, so she changed her position and snapped niya. In the end, you should also focus on your studies. So it means approved na siya. Approved na siya of her son uh, rush dueling. Now. <laughs> Ain't that a crazy twist? Okay? Ain't that a crazy twist? The guys still don't still don't know yet that Yoshio is Mimi's son. Okay? Anak niya. Right? So yeah, things worked out well and of course um Rook's new ace has been introduced. So overall, well actually uh, overall it's a uh, Shall we say a tutorial episode on field spells? All right. I think the real ace of Yoshio's deck here is the field spell, the Beast Gear World. Okay. You know, <clears throat> if you look at Sevens, it is the TV. Um, it's the TV version of the current Yu-Gi-Oh manga, uh, OCG Structures. Okay. OCG Structures. It's an entirely uh, different storyline, but it's tutorial in nature. It teaches how to play the game. Whereas in well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Gi -Oh! Sevens also has that same look and feel. Has that same look and feel. Okay. Of course, it's a new it's a new way to it's a new way to play the game, and of course they have to they have to tell everybody, hey, uh, you can still use field spells and rush duels. You can still special someone in Rush Duels. 
the special summon day, uh, I think they featured that on episode. And the duel between Kakuto and Yuga. Okay? Where, where Yuga was able to special summon Seven Roads Magician using the effect of Seven Roads Witch. Okay, remember that? Remember that, guys? Ganon yun. So, this, is, this was a tutorial episode. Okay, episode 8. But, it's really good. Okay. Overall, yeah. Really good. The reason why I'm doing this is because it's a tutorial episode and um, a little plot twist. That's why shaky thumbs up. I give it a shaky thumbs up. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's basic. Again, it's a tutorial episode, right? Then of course the plot, the plot has thickened again. So we know Yoshio is Mimi's son. Imagine. Imagine if you're uh, imagine if you're a girl. Imagine if you're a girl. If you are a girl, okay? if you are a woman, you're 37 years old and you look just like that. Okay? Mapagkaama lang kang mapagkaama lang kang elementary school elementary school student pa lang. <laughs> imagine having that. Imagine na imagine having that kind of a uh, that kind of a gift, the gift of uh, extreme youth. <laughs> you're someone like that, actually. No one can tell. Lightmere episode 13. I don't know why uh, why some people are uh, what's called this downplaying this episode, right? It is a good season finale. Imagine all came to a head on that what's called that that waters watershed sword. There was a fight, there was a battle scene okay, between uh, Claire's sister and them, uh, and and them the two. So yeah, it was intense. Okay, it was really intense. Suichi is now holding holding his holding his own against monsters like that. Okay. And wow, ang astig niya. <laughs> now now we all know how Suichi decided on his form. Yung teddy bear na yon. Okay, that teddy bear made him decide to assume that form every time every time he needs to. So they've already um uh, the gang they they joined uh has already released them from from that uh, from that contract. So, excuse me. His memories in Shuichi's memories have have almost been cleared if it weren't for uh, Elena's Elena's uh, Elena's handiwork again. <laughs> as portrayed by uh, by that by the by the Japanese script being slowly being revealed. It's almost revealed. Biglang whoop! Nakialam si Elena. Nakialam uli. So we all know Elena killed Suichi's parents, right? <clears throat> That's why Suichi was uh, was so gung ho in this episode. Uh, he was he was really gung ho. Then combined with clear psyche, ooh, <laughs> <clears throat> it was well, it was a uh, a good season finale, and what? Well, by how it ended, okay? Elena is not uh, is not the boss enemy here, but Naoto, okay? the one controlling the uh, the white ghost that the white ghost with the big sword. Sha ang tunay na kalaban dito. Okay? Sha ang tunay na kalaban dito. I can't wait for season two. <laughs> I can't wait for season two to, to come around. I don't know. Well, there's no announcement yet because well, we got this. We got this pandemic going on, so everything's nearly everything is on home. So yeah. <laughs> if you're a Glidemir fan, if you're a Glidemir fan like me, you're going you're going to you're going to anticipate there will be a season two because <clears throat> well it had a um, it had a hang in the ending. 
what we Filipinos call bitin, right? Yung yung pagkabitin niya hindi ano eh. It's not well it is it is bitin, but it's not disappointing, right? There is something to look forward to. So right near season 1 finale. It's really good. <clears throat> I can't wait for season 2. <laughs> I cannot wait for season 2. Now, uh, probably season 2 will have the... Um, they might expound on the relationship between Shuichi and Claire. It's slowly becoming... They're, getting, they're, they're becoming that close already. They're, they're close to that. They're close to that. Okay? Of, uh, of having a... Having a, a romantic relationship. Which either enhances or complicates the show. I don't know what's going to happen in season two, but I am praying. This is one of the new animes that I am praying there will be a season two. It's really good. It's really good. Gleipnir. So to the animators of Gleipnir and to its creator, holy shit! <laughs> Please give me a season two. We say hello to Super Xeros, all right? Um, wow. So here's how it went. Two childhood friends, okay? One became a hero and one became a... Uh, one became a germaphobe... And one became a germaphobic man-hater, <laughs> basically. But they um, eventually uh, found each other because of one enemy, the Kiseishu. Now this Kiseishu, wow. They feed on human sexual energy to survive. <laughs> hey, yung, yung kalibugan ng tao. <laughs> ah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any, I don't have, I don't have some choice words for it, but that, that's it, okay? The human, a human sexual energy is their uh, is their food. That's why they invaded Earth years ago. So, Red, okay, Red, or Angel to um, to to the female lead to the female as how the female lead calls him began this crusade of of, of killing them. Okay, he uses a watch. Using a special, a special watch called the Exeros, called the Exo, uh, yeah, no, the zero, called the Zero Gear. That 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 is powered by his own sexual energy. He uses that to fight them off. Okay? He has already eliminated most of them over the years. Then <clears throat> one day, one of the one of the Kiseisho attacks both him and the female lead. So. He has no choice but to protect her. So, tago sila. Then, his, his Zero Gear acted, uh, acted, uh, began acting up crazily. Began, began acting up weirdly. Kasi, nakahawak, magka-holding hands pa. Sige. Alright. So, the female becomes part of the team. Okay. Naging lima sila. So, they're called Super Exeros. <sighs> It's both a superhero and a harem, and a harem anime. <laughs> by the way, the pilot. By the way, by the way, I see in the pilot. Okay. Wow. <laughs> if you're a uh, if you're a kid, you should not watch this anime. But if you're an adult like me, by all means, watch it. It has great potential. Okay, judging from the pilot. And yeah, I'll, I'll start. I'll start watching it. I will start watching it. And you will see reviews, and you will see episode reviews from it here. Okay, I assure you that it has great potential. And kaibay, no? <laughs> kaibay. These are the types of storylines you would only see in hentes. These are the types of storylines you would see in hentes. But this one, it's uh, major watered down for general viewing. It's it's a little bit watered down. The the perverseness is there, okay? 
This kind of perverse test, I only, the last time I saw this kind of perverse test was in Gintama. <laughs> and the OP, okay, the OP was, uh, was, the OP is performed by one, uh, by one, uh, by one of the artists that did the, a the did the EDs for Gintama. Not only for Gintama, not only for Gintama, but also, they also, they also did the OP for Haikyuu, okay, Burnout Syndromes, so... I am going to watch this. Okay. There's the uh, there's a there's a bit of a there's a Gintama and Haikyuu reference to it. Because eh. eh, although Burnout Syndromes uh, did not credit themselves as that for this show, okay. but I could I uh, I could hear I could recognize the uh, the voice of the lead vocals. Burnout Syndromes, yun. Okay, that's Burnout Syndromes. So I am going to watch. I am going to consistently watch this show. So Super Exeros or Dokyo Hentai Exeros, great pilot. It's a wonderful pilot. It's a wonderful way to start a show that has uh, action, comedy, and perverseness. Okay. Last time I've seen these three work together was in Gintama. So well, it's not. Well, it's not the next Gintama. Okay, Gintama is Gintama, right? There's a, there can never be other, there can never be another Gintama. But this is a uh, overall, it's a superhero show. It's a superhero show. Um, I'd rather not. If you're a fan of My Hero Academia, don't watch it anymore. Just watch this one. <laughs> Just watch this one. Okay. If you're an adult like if you're an adult like me and you're a fan of My Hero Academia, I strongly suggest to not watch to not watch My Hero Academia anymore. Just watch this one. It's more enjoyable. <laughs> it's more enjoyable. So again, Super Exeros, great pilot. Wow, I I can't wait for the next episode. I can't wait for um I can't wait to hear the ED. Because usually in because usually in any anime if it's a pilot, the OP is usually sung at the end. So, yeah. I said burnout syndrome sang like ang OP. All the more reason I should I should consistent I should um I should uh I should consistently watch this anime from now on. Alright? <laughs>